What's up everybody, Superdix fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2011 Porsche Panamera Turbo. Huge thanks to Harrison Auto Sales for hooking up with this very sweet and very fast car to review for you guys today. So about the Panamera Turbo, well it's one of the fastest sedans in the world and it keeps up with most supercars. That alone just makes this thing amazing to even be standing next to. But uh, you know, as far as the looks of the Panamera Turbo go, I know a lot of people aren't a huge fan of them. I think it doesn't look bad, uh, especially this one has the sport appearance package. So in the front there you have the darkened headlamp and uh, the more aggressive front bumper there with the uh, LED daytime running lights and it looks really cool. I mean the back end is the part that people are a little iffy about and I think it fits the Porsche flavor and uh, styling design of the sloping rear roof line and the deck lid there that slopes down and um, you know it could use some improvement but overall I think it's a very good looking car especially going down the road these things look really cool. Right, so for the interior of the Porsche Panamera Turbo, well, first thing you notice is it's beautiful in here. Porsche's interiors in the past few years have been so well done, and um, this is just beautiful to look at. Um, it's just everything about it is just very beautifully styled. Uh, but first things first, anyway, sitting down in these seats, uh, they're pretty good. They're a little bit on the looser side, but then again, this is supposed to be a sedan, you know, a sporty but luxurious uh, sedan. So they're very comfortable, soft seats. Uh, but, you know, I wish that the uh, torso support was a little bit tighter, you know, with the side bolsters there. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, I think, get nicer seats that uh, have more adjustability so you can have uh, the bolsters brought in a little bit. But these seats are still pretty good overall. Next is the steering wheel in this car which is pretty great it's be beautiful it's just it's so gorgeous to look at again uh, everything is just very nicely metal trimmed you have these little screens in the middle of the uh, steering wheel too which is super cool and uh, it feels great in your hands really nice nine and three position ten and two notches are very beefy and uh, just beautifully leather wrapped and it's just one of the most beautiful wheels out there in my opinion Next is the gauges in the uh, Panamera Turbo here, which are typical Porsche gauges, you know, very uh, similar to all the other uh, gauges in the Porsche family, and uh, they all look very good, you know, and uh, you have the nice digital speedometer there down at the bottom, and um, this other little gauge to the right here, which is just a screen and displays all kinds of things for you, uh, is very nice to have, especially because you can actually have your navigation screen in there, which is great for if you're you know, driving around places. And I mean, it's not that far away to look down here to the center screen, but it's nice to have it right there in the middle. So that's very cool. And uh, another gauge, of course, with a Sport Chrono package, you have this uh, stopwatch up here, which is very cool. And it makes very satisfying ticking sounds as it's ticking along there. And um, so yeah, I really like all the gauges. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, it's just Again, very nice, and I love the way that Porsche designed this. They got it right from the very beginning here, and um, you know, you have a touchscreen head unit, which is very easy to use, very straightforward. You have the shortcut buttons here. There's no dials to spin or any kind of goofy controllers. It's just touchscreen, nice and easy to use, uh, nice graphics and everything. That's one of the best German head units out there, I think. I really love the way Porsche does that. Um, coming down to the rest of the buttons, now there is a sea of buttons here, but obviously once you own one of these you get to know where everything's at very quickly but for the newcomer it might be a little confusing but you have your temperature and things like that up here at the top and then coming down you have all the other buttons for uh, your climate and things like that and there's a few extra fun buttons that this one has as options of course you have the sport and sport plus buttons uh, this one has the air suspension so you have a button uh, to play with the firmness of the suspension as well as raising and lowering the car and over on the right hand side here includes one of the best buttons that's ever been put in any car ever, and that is an open exhaust button. And so uh, this one has the sport exhaust, and so you hit that and it opens up the valves and makes this car a nice, good amount louder, which is cool. You also have a button for raising the rear spoiler. And so uh, you have the beautiful shifter in the middle of it all here as well, which is just gorgeous, the PDK shifter, and that's a work of art of its own. And um, so overall, just all very nice. As far as storage space goes in the Panamera Turbo, it's actually not that great. Uh, that's one of the things I can discount this car for. You have uh, map pockets here in the doors that are large enough you could probably slide a bottle in there, but uh, it's a little small. Uh, and then you just have a power outlet, and then you have a tiny little ashtray thing in here in the middle. You have one cup holder, and then you have a very shallow center console, uh, which also has a USB, an auxiliary jack, and a power outlet. Um, but you can't fit a whole lot of stuff in there since it's so shallow. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, nicely padded. It's not overly padded, but it's, uh, 
you know, soft enough. Uh, and then, you know, the, the way Porsche does their cup holders, they always have a cool trick up their sleeve or over here you hit this and you have two cup holders that'll pop out there and that's uh, nice to have. And um, so you have three cup holders up front, which is very good and better than most cars, but that's it. There's no other cubbies to store things. It's just those little tiny things and that's it. Of course, this is a sedan, so you can throw anything you need to in the back and there's storage spaces there in the back for the rear occupants. While we're talking about the back seat, it's super nice, just as nice as the front seat. Um, you know, there are two buckets, obviously it only seats uh, four people total uh, in this car. So you, some people wish there was a fifth seat, but I think it's great just having the new, nice two buckets there. And uh, you know, you have your own heated seats back there, your own air vents, and they have cup holders galore and everything. Um, and the leg room is plentiful, headroom is plentiful. It's, it seats people over six feet tall easily all day long. Um, so it's a very spacious back seat. Trunk space in the Panamera is also very good. So uh, you, I'd say you could probably fit four full-size suitcases in there. Um, and it's, you know, you can fit lots of golf clubs, whatever you want to do. But it's, you know, a good depth. It's not super deep, but a good depth. And uh, it's a really great trunk. All right, so starting to go for a drive. Uh, all the modern Porsches have these very cool car-shaped key fobs that I love. Uh, it's so cool. But, you know, this one has the keyless start. So, uh, you know, Porsches always have the start here on the left-hand side. But this one, you just leave the key in your pocket. There's a little fob that's always permanently there. And you just turn that. Roars to life. So setting off in the Porsche Panamera Turbo. So first thing you notice is um, this PDK transmission. I've been dying to drive one of these uh, Porsche PDKs and uh, it's really smooth. You know, there isn't really any lag, you know, like there is in some of the other dual clutch systems of other manufacturers. Uh, it's very smooth and subtle. You almost can't even tell it's a dual clutch most of the time. And um, so I really like that. Uh, but another thing you notice right off the bat in Panamera when you drive them is the hood drops down so low and uh, you feel like you're sitting on the very front of the car or just driving it. It's it's a very cool uh, sensation. And, uh, you know, so obviously because of that, you have great visibility in the front. Uh, side visibility is very good as well. You know, you have large windows. You have a B pillar there, but uh, it actually doesn't get in the way too much. And uh, the only visibility thing I can knock is the rear visibility it, it feels like you're driving a long long car because that rear window is tiny and so luckily you know most of these have the backup camera so that'll help you with reversing but otherwise it'd probably be pretty hard to park this thing without the assistance of that driving along though on this bumpy park road here um it's actually not bad at all it, you know it soaks up the bumps so well it's uh obviously a very luxurious car so that's what it's supposed to do and you have the adjustable suspension as well so obviously we have it in the softest setting right now and and um, it's just, it's really nice. It soaks up everything and just kind of glide along. Alrighty, so uh, I'm gonna put the car into manual mode here. I'm gonna put it into Sport Plus. I have the exhaust on. And so let's uh, turn onto this back road here and see how it does. Point it straight. Holy crap! Whoa! Okay! <laughs> this thing is stupid fast! So, the uh, Porsche Panamera Turbo normally comes with 500 horsepower and uh, around 550 pounds-feet of torque. This one is equipped with a power kit, which is a $21,000 option and gives you an extra 40 horsepower and roughly an extra 37 more pounds-feet of torque. But there's an overboost function, so when you go full throttle like I just did, it bumps it up an extra 100 uh, newton meters of torque, which is roughly uh, in the 75 uh, foot-pounds of torque range. So we're dealing with 540 horsepower total and we're dealing with over 600 pounds feet of torque so this thing is a mighty mighty v8 engine twin turbo 4.8 liter v8 and man does that thing pull <laughs> wow i'm like buzzed from that adrenaline rush it's like seriously well, that was fast uh so anyway uh coming up to some corners here um the PDK is pretty quick to downshift. This is again a 2011, so they've even improved it since then. But man, the steering and the handling is so sharp. It just feels like there's no body roll. Everything is so precise, razor sharp. Uh, you get so much feel through the steering wheel as well. I mean, I just get loads of information of what's going on through the steering wheel. It's really great. It's kind of up to this tight corner I always take. Let's see about the body roll. So it feels a little bit heavy, but it handles it so well, and it just it's so eager to just rip around that corner. Wow. <laughs> 
So let's see about this power again, shall we? <laughs> oh man, I'm glad we have all-wheel drive because this thing, you need it. Man, this thing rips. <laughs> Yeah, definitely one of the fastest cars I've ever reviewed, hands down. So these things, uh, stock uh, Porsche claims it'll do 0 to 60 in around 3.9 seconds. This one with a power kit, they're saying it's more like 3.7 seconds. But uh, the other magazines have tested these, and without the power kit, they've gotten 3.5 seconds 0 to 60. So this thing's pretty close to 3 seconds 0 to 60 um, with the power kit. And that is stupid fast. I mean, that's super car fast. That will keep up with most supercars and beat all but the highest of supercars. So I mean this is serious performance and I just want to keep accelerating. <laughs> Whoa, okay, <laughs> time to shut her down. <laughs> Oh man, this thing, <laughs> it just rockets up to astronomical speeds really, really fast. Oh, and I even noticed, I mean, it's all wheel drive, but that back end was still getting a little squirmy because this thing just takes off like a bat out of hell. I mean, geez. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fun car. Fun, fun car. Oh man. So you get the whole package of this thing. It handles really well. It just takes off like a bullet and uh, yeah, you can't ask for more. How, I mean, there's no way you can be unhappy with this car. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to drive around here for a little while longer and I'll come back and give you some updated impressions. Alright, so I've been driving this car for uh, all afternoon here and uh, it's it's really fun and um, so a bunch of things that I've uh, thought about and realized over the past few hours I've been driving it. First is that the ride is a little bit firmer than I initially thought. Um, it's not bad and I actually, it feels very solid to me. Um, it feels like you're driving around a big piece of German lead but it's uh, it's definitely, it's not super soft, even in the softest suspension setting, it's still a little bit uh, rough. Uh, not so much so that it, you know, makes this car look bad, but it, it's definitely, I think, a little firmer than, of course, your standard S-Class or Audi A8. Um, so, but I mean, again, that's either a pro or con, depending on what you like. But um, definitely a little bit more sporty in nature than some of the other large sedans out there. Um, another thing that you might even be able to notice just now while I'm talking is that it gets a little bit too noisy in here as far as road noise is concerned. Um, I think most of that has to do with the tires. Um, I mean, these are just the standard kind of tires that come on the car, uh, but they do generate a good amount of road noise. But I think if you swap tires or, you know, experimented with a different type of tire, those a little bit quieter that would go away because the car does have pretty good sound uh, deadening and obviously it uh, feels pretty solid and quiet in here as well but you do have some uh, road noise that's a little bit more than I was expecting as well for a car that carries the price tag that this one does um, other things stereo sounds very good um, and you know it's just it's a fun car one other thing though that I wasn't totally impressed by were the brakes I believe these are just the standard brakes you can get carbon ceramics on this car um, obviously it's a very expensive option this one I think just has a standard slotted uh, rotors uh, that are steel and um, you know they stop pretty good but it doesn't it's not as mind-blowing as the acceleration another thing that I have to mention is uh, this transmission which is pretty good overall so the shifts could be a little bit faster but they're actually really really good especially whenever you're in the sport or sport plus very snappy shifts can't complain about that another thing that's very good about it is that whenever you're inching up in traffic it feels basically like an automatic like it's a full torque converter automatic because it just inches up it's not jerky it's uh, very progressive in the way that it does it it's really just about perfect in all those things uh, the one thing though that I can kind of fault it on and this is probably because it's an earlier PDK as being a 2011 model is that whenever you stomp on the gas it still takes a little bit too long to think about it before it downshifts and from what I've seen uh, in other reviews of newer PDKs they're more quick to downshift and react this one uh, being a few years old probably a little bit slower um, so if you want to drive this car spiritedly I suggest leaving it in manual mode and just using the paddles it's more fun that way anyway so uh, that's cool. Uh, while we're talking about the driving dynamics uh, and things like that, um, another thing is this exhaust button. While it's very cool that it has an exhaust button and it does make a difference, the difference is so slight that it it's almost useless. Um, so you know, like I don't have it on right now. 
now I have it on. It maybe increases it like a slight, slight amount, but it's so slight that you really don't even notice it, um, at least with the windows up. So that's a little disappointing. I was hoping that there was an exhaust button for a reason. It would really get nice and loud, but it doesn't. So um, I wish there was more sound in this car. I mean, you do still have a subtle burble and a uh, little tiny bit of a turbo whooshy sound, but for the most part, uh, it's pretty quiet in here and I wish there was more sound. But I mean, it's definitely still a fun car to drive. And that's the other thing is the power is very thrilling. Um, it almost is, ex is as extreme as a GTR, not quite because the gearing's a little taller, I think, in this, and um, it's not quite that extreme, but it has the same sensation of you like almost having superpowers. Like when you're like trying to pass people on the highway, it's just like downshift and boom, it's it's like instant. Um, it feels like you're like flying or something. Like literally, you just once you have it in one of the lower gears, I mean, everything you do is instant. Um, all the car's reflexes are razor sharp. Uh, the handling is so good whenever you're going around corners, you know, or passing people, things like that. It's so quick, so sharp, and <laughs> it really just gives you tons of confidence. Another thing is, while I'm slowly driving in traffic here, um, but I have been on some back roads in this car and drove it pretty quickly. And what I found was the faster you push this car in a corner, the better and more satisfying it feels. So, uh, you know, lower speed corners, it feels pretty good. I mean, this is a heavy car. It's a little over 4,400 pounds. So, I mean, <laughs> that's uh, heavier than some SUVs. So, I mean, it's a heavy, heavy car. But whenever you're going fast around fast sweepers and things like that, this thing, it stays so planted and it feels so good going around high speed corners. So that's fun. Another thing that's fun to watch is uh, whenever you get up to elevated speeds, I think mean roughly around 60 miles per hour, that rear spoiler pops up. And uh, it's very cool the way it pops up and then splits out and uh, elongates itself. But anyway, huge thanks to Harrison Auto Sales once again for allowing me to review this car. This one is for sale currently on their lot. So yeah, definitely all the links in the description. Uh, just click on it and you'll have all the info about the car and you can give them a call and they'd love to help you out. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Take care.